Hey there, it's Sophia Ren again, creator of the Sacred Armor eCourse, Creating Better Boundaries for Sensitive Women, writer and intuitive counselor. And today I want to be talking to you a little bit about inspiration, why I love cauldrons so much. Now, if you have attended some of my live events, you might remember me talking about cauldrons. I, I recently lit on fire a bunch of paper in a little mini cauldron I have on camera at my awakening event. Um, this was in beginning of May 2014, I think. And um, they're the reason why I love cauldrons. See, I don't like arbitrary things. I don't like someone telling me, like, you need to do this every day or this is an integral part of your spirituality and not understanding why. And it's one of the reasons why I don't really like organized religion for me personally. Um, I just I've t I'm a very independent free thinker and I like to find a personal relationship with the things that I have in my life and that I believe um, or rather am inspired by as I like to say um, I'm not really attracted to dogmas but what's interesting is that I actually did enter into a um, you know an agreement with a religious institution it's called the sacredness online Wiccan college and I made another video about how I don't really I don't really use words to describe what I am with any certainty because like I said I don't really like organized religion I, I'm just sort of me I take the inspiration that comes to me but why did I enter this why did I enter this uh, year and a half year and day study which actually ended up being about four years still almost complete there um, but why did I do that I did that because when I was much younger in middle school I was very attracted to goddesses to the idea of there being a goddess you know around the time of you know, being eight or nine or ten, I started to really realize that, hey, growing up without a mother, because mine had passed away, was really actually very influential in me. I started to become a little conscious of how it made me feel to see other people with their mom and to have my father dating someone seriously and to be thinking about, you know, do I need a parent? Like, do I want a parent? Yes, but wasn't really getting what I wanted in any of those other people. I, I wanted something that was like, you know, someone who would take care of me, something looking out for me and really loving and nurturing me and not criticizing me or making me do chores, but just giving me the warm fuzzies. And that's when I really liked the idea of a goddess because, see, I already had a dad. I didn't, a god for me, I didn't have that that space in my life that needed to be filled. What I really needed healing around was motherhood, motherness. And so I loved the idea of that. And I got really interested and, um, you know, going into the New Age section as a kid, being a fantasy lover, I was like, ooh, magic. So that was my original foray into religion and spirituality. And and I had some very bad experiences in middle school that really scarred me, traumatized me, made me feel like I couldn't explore that part of myself. And I went into other spiritual avenues, none of which really fulfilled me. So as I grew into my creativity and who I really was after college, I realized that, that I needed to go back to basics. I needed to go back to where I started. And through that journey, I was able to again branch out. But I think that when we have a wound, we have to go back to that and heal that before we can move on. So that's what I did there. And so I was really interested in the whole goddess religion perspective. Um, something that a lot of people talk about is the three archetypes of maiden mother crone sometimes people add a fourth one of queen but um i was like why is there three like what's the whole three thing i know there's like the father the ghost the holy spirit i know that like you know pe you know the irish have like the little tree foil thing what's with the three and so that was a particular interest of mine i did a lot of studying into different goddesses like it would be like you pick a goddess for a month and you explore that so one time i was doing caridwin who is a welsh goddess I love tales of King Arthur, and I studied around Scotland, love the United Kingdom. So I was really interested in Caridwyn. She's sort of like um, in the movie with um, Arthur. You know, there's like the evil hag witch. Well, that's Caridwyn, but kind of her negative dark side. And what um, one of the things that was interesting to me was that as um, as I was also at the same time learning about Oracle cards, tarot reading, and, and reading cards, um, which I do now professionally, I found a card which was called Primrose. And I'll be showing you a picture of this card in a moment. But the meaning of this card, um, which had a cauldron on it, and some beautiful flowers, a beautiful scene, was love, creativity, and rebirth. 
and the card was all about new love, new beginnings, new cycles, and tenderness, tender beginnings, and creativity. It was the flower of the bards. Coming from a musical family, anything that inspired the bards is really cool to me. And yes, I know that they have their own organization. Like I said, not a joiner. But um, also rebirth, because with everything that ends, there's also a new beginning. So it's an incredibly healing concept to me. Um, just everything on my card, I really, I really loved everything about it. So I kept it out as I do often when I find inspiration from um, a card, because usually have really nice art. So I kept it in a sacred place to me, and I would just look upon it and kept in mind. And that's why I chose Caridwen, because she was associated with that card. That's her cauldron, and her cauldron has it has everything in it that you could ever want. If you needed healing, healing potion, if you needed new life, if you needed to become beautiful. In fact, there's an old myth about her that she had a very, very hideous son, and she was hoping that he would become beautiful. She made this concoction for him. She enlisted a servant to be stirring and stirring and stirring without stop, this huge cauldron. But unfortunately, at the end of all of this brewing, all of this trouble to make this, three drops landed on his hand, and he became beautiful and intelligent and won all the positive qualities in the world, while her child that she made this for was forever going to be ugly and stupid. So she was like, I'm going after you. I can't believe you did this. And that's where that whole part of the Disney movie, where Caridwen is switching into different forms, that's, that's from the Caridwen myth. She would switch into whatever form. Her servant had got all these magical powers from her brew, and so he was switching with her faster and faster, and they were going so fast, so, so fast, until finally I think he got a little confused, and he turned into an ear of corn, and she a hen, and she ate him. But the thing is, because she's the goddess of rebirth, she actually gave birth to him, and he became one of the most noted bards in all history, Towson. So really, it was he did end up getting some really good stuff out of that. So, I mean, no one, she didn't really win, but the whole thing about rebirth is that you don't really lose with the end that you think you do. So, I don't know, it's just the cycle of life. It's very healing to me because I did have a death in my family with my mother that, you know, have hope for something more, that everything that we have in life can be reworked around and we can create something new and beautiful out of it and something that's going to create wonderful songs or stories or beautiful art and love and all those good things in life and that was really an interesting myth to me and I thought it was kind of cool so um I think I had that in my head and at the time I was at this place, Sacred Myths, I was starting to learn about this concept called empathy, which is when people pick up on the emotions of other people. And what's funny is that I never really realized that's what that meant. I, I heard people say, oh, I'm really empathetic. And I was like, oh, yeah, me too. I just, you know, I really feel for people when they're in a bad place because I get, I get what it must be like. And I just, you know, I just, my heart goes out to them. And I didn't realize that some things had started to make sense when I thought, oh, was I really like picking up, oh, I was at a party. And suddenly I was self-conscious and it wasn't just me, it was other people who were self-conscious and that made it weird for me. And it was like, like we're kind of connected. And I didn't, I didn't ever hear about that before, but at the college they had a course. It was all about how to manage that. And I was trying these different techniques. They called it energetic shielding or shield, you know, shielding of some kind. And I tried all these different techniques, but like I said, I, I don't like arbitrary things. I don't like things that don't make sense to me, that don't resonate with me. I can't do them every day if there's some random visualization that just doesn't have any significance to me. So I had to kind of play around and find my own personal practice. And so for me, the cauldron came up in my imagination and suddenly I come across a technique that would help me for years. So that was about four and a half years ago, and I'm still using this visualization on a daily basis to help me to calm my emotions, to clear away any um, inconvenient things I don't want to be feeling or thinking, to help to get me really feeling jazzed about life and energetic and all in place to find the success in my life, in my business, in my creativity, and my love life that I want. So it's fantastic. And I thought I would share a little bit about this because I do share it in my free training for, from inspired, you know, by um, my Sacred Armor e-course, which is where you can learn 
how to create your own personal practice that'll really inspire you and and be essential for your daily living. But you can have something that's unique to you, that gives you significance, that's going to fit you and can help you to feel great during your day. And I've always had a skill in helping people find these things, but now I'm going to be doing this in a group. So it's going to be fantastic. Hope you check out the free training. And in the third video, I also go into how this cauldron model has inspired me to create a whole system for how you can create change in your life, too, with each part of it having a certain meaning. So I can tell you more about that then. Thanks for watching this video. I know it's a little bit longer, but you can go ahead to sacredarmor.com slash free. And I hope you liked my little discussion about why cauldrons inspire me so much. Thanks so much.